Ivo the Engine, The Foxes. Not very long ago, in the top left-hand corner of Wales, there was a railway. It wasn't a very long railway, and it wasn't a very important railway, but it was called the Merioneth and Llanticilly Rail Traction Company Limited, and it was all there was. Beside a wood, beside some fields, beside the railway, stood the house of Mrs. Porty. It was a very posh house, with a lovely garden, and outside the garden gate on the railway line stood the locomotive of the Merioneth and Llanticilly Rail Traction Company, whose name, as I am sure you have guessed, was Ivor the Engine. Is that all? No. Where was Jones the Steam, Ivor's driver? Jones the Steam and Mrs. Porty were leaning on the fence, looking into the overgrown wood near the house. What were they looking at? They were looking at foxes. There they are, Mr. Jones, cried Mrs. Porty. Three lovely fox cubs she has, haven't you, Mrs. Fox? The fox did not answer. I don't think she even heard Mrs. Porty, because Mrs. Porty was whispering so as not to disturb her. In any case, she was too busy looking proudly at her three fat cubs rolling and tumbling in the dust in front of their earth to take any notice of Jones and Mrs. Porty. Oh, I do hope the fox hunters don't find them here, sighed Mrs. Porty. They have been out rather a lot lately, went Ivor's whistle. And what is that for? asked Mrs. Porty. Oh, Ivor is keeping watch, explained Jones. From where he is standing, he can see Thlaniog Station. If any work comes in, Dice Station becomes very excited, and he runs up and down the platform, shouting about engines and engine drivers not being where they should be when they should be working. You'd better be off then, Jones, said Mrs. Porty. Oh, by the way, when you're down at the station, you might just see if my new hat has arrived. It's for the Institute Prize Giving tomorrow. It's a lovely hat, all high with feathers, and a sort of, ah, uh, yes, well, I will go and see if it's there, said Jones. You look after the cubs now, Mrs. Fox. And you look after the foxes, Mrs. Porty. Jones swung into Ivor's cab and they rolled down towards the Thlaniog station. Dice Station stopped running up and down when he saw them. He was looking very cross. Oh, there you are at last, he said. Where have you been? This hat box is coming for Mrs. Porty. Very urgent, it says. Deliver immediately. Handle with great care. Oh, yes, it's a lovely hat, said Jones. All feathers and high with a veil and... Well, I dare say, interrupted Di... But your job is to deliver it, not talk about it. You'd better take it up to Mrs. Porty right away, or she'll be on the telephone shouting for it. Mrs. Porty does not shout, said Jones. As a matter of fact, we were up there just now. The foxes in our wood had three lovely cubs. Oh, nature study, is it? growled Di. You'd better watch out. If head office comes to hear of it, you'd be in trouble taking time off to watch foxes indeed. And the foxes had better watch out too, because the hunt is about today. Oh, don't speak of it, Di, sighed Jones. Speak of it, said Di. I can hear them. They listened. 
They heard the distant sound of the huntsman's horn and the baying of the hounds. Oh, die! I can hear them, shouted Jones. What shall I do? Climb on the roof, suggested Di. Jones was puzzled. What on earth for? They're not hunting me, they're hunting foxes. No, silly, said Di. Climb up on the roof so you can see where they are. Quick, I'll give you a bunk up. Jones clambered onto the roof and held onto the chimney pot. I can see them, he shouted. They're heading across Pew's field towards Mrs. Porty's wood. Isn't that where the foxes are? said Di. Yes, and they're heading straight towards them. Oh dear. There's Mrs. Fox now. I can see her. She has left the wood and she's running across the field. Well, why is she doing that? I expect she is heading the hunt away from her cubs, shouted Jones. Which way is she going? Down towards the bridge. Went Ivor's whistle. Yes, shouted Jones, and he jumped down. And don't forget Mrs. Porty's hat, added Di, pitching the pretty hat box into Ivor's cab as he began to move. Jones and Ivor sped down the line as fast as his wheels would go. The hunt, a pack of baying hounds, followed by handsome horses ridden by ladies and gentlemen in scarlet coats, was streaming across the fields. And far ahead of them, Mrs. Fox was streaking like a red flash across the grass. Stop by the bridge, Ivor, shouted Jones. The fox was running beside the stream as Ivor slapped on his brakes by the bridge. She has seen us. Be ready, whispered Jones. The fox swerved and ran up the bank towards them. Now, shouted Jones. The fox vanished into a vast cloud of steam, which engulfed Ivor and Jones and the bridge. The hounds ran into the steam. The horses ran into the steam. But nobody could do anything until the steam cleared a bit. I say railway man, said the huntsman, wiping his streaming eyes. Do you have to make so much steam like that? It's a bit inconvenient for us, don't you know? Oh, I was just blowing out the pipes a bit, said Jones. I have to do it now and then. See, it's like sneezing, you know. I say railway man, said the huntsman. What on earth is that on your head? Oh, the hat. It's for the Institute praise giving tomorrow. It's a lovely hat. Look, all high with feathers and a veil. And yes, yes, well, well, I I dare say it's a charming hat, old boy. But what we are looking for is a fox. You know, a fox. Oh, I know a fox, agreed Jones. Well, have you seen one, damn it? Barked the huntsman. Yes, I did happen to see one, said Jones. But I don't think she wanted to see you. Do you, Ivor? (laughs) Laughed Ivor. Good day to you, gentlemen, said Jones. The huntsman watched Ivor move away. Jones waved to them, and the dirty feathers on his hat flapped about in the wind. What an extraordinary chap, said the huntsman. Oh, go along, Carruthers, said another huntsman. We must find that fox. They did not find that fox. They searched all around the bridge, but there was no trace of it anywhere. Meanwhile, Jones and Ivor came down to the points behind the post office at Thlaniog. Mrs. Williams, the postmistress, threw open her window. Oh, Mr. Jones, it really suits you, she cried. Yes, it's a lovely hat, look, said Jones. All high, with feathers and a... I can see that, said Mrs. Williams. It's a lovely hat, but it isn't yours, is it? Oh, no, it's it's for Mrs. Porty, said Jones. But why are you wearing it then? Oh, you'd only laugh if I told you, said Jones, as he opened the regulator. (laughs) They moved away up the line. I bet Mrs. Porty won't laugh when she sees a new hat, said Mrs. Williams as she closed her window. She was quite right about that. 
Mrs. Porty saw Jones and Steam come up the path, carrying the hat box, and she met him on the front porch with a face like a thundercloud. Mr. Jones, she roared, are you wearing my hat? Jones looked very worried. No, 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 wait, wait a minute, Mrs. Porty, he stammered. Wait, wait until I tell you what happened. Well, where is your own hat, Mr. Jones? Oh, mine is in a hat box. It doesn't spoil so easily, you see. Spoil, roared Mrs. Porty, glaring at the grimy, wind-blown feathers on Jones's head. That hat is completely spoiled already. Well, it was the hat, you see, explained Jones. And there was nowhere else she could go and... Well, wait a minute. Mrs. Porty glowered while Jones undid the ribbon on the hat box. Out leapt a cloud of tissue paper, Jones's blue cap and a streak of red fur. Mrs. Fox, shouted Mrs. Porty. Mrs. Fox shot across the garden and dived into the wood with her cubs. Yes, you see, I, th I thought you would rather, stammered Jones. Mrs. Porty smiled. Oh, yes, I do see, yes. I certainly would rather. Yes, of course. I am glad you did it. And the hat? Jones took off the hat and gave it to her. Yes, said Mrs. Porty. I am sure that it'll be perfectly all right with a bit of tidying up. And it was. The hat looked lovely at the Institute prize giving the next day. A bit blackish about the feathers, but quite lovely. <laughs> Thank you.